Good evening, good evening, good evening. It is time for the Purposeful Productivity Show. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to talk about the last section of this series on your productivity system. And it is, a system is simply a set of tools, whether it's hardware and software, and processes that help you manage your time, your task, your priorities, your commitments, and your projects. It is that set of, again, tools, hardware and software, and processes that help you manage all of those components of your life and of your business and of your volunteer work. It can be simple or it can be complex. You just have to make it work for you. And we've talked about over the last several weeks how to make these things work in your environment for you the way you work. Tonight I'm going to wrap it up and put a nice bow on it for you and send you out of June and into July with a few instructions. Welcome. My name is Florence Donald and I am your productivity coach, a productivity practitioner, been doing it for a long time. I work with professionals, small business owners, nonprofit ex executives, and faith-based organizations on this very thing, how and where to make improvements in their productivity system, really simply to get the friction points out of their system. Where there's friction, you're going to get stuck. So we work together to get rid of the friction. Welcome again. I am excited to be here. So tonight is all about leveling up your productivity with these core tools that I believe are really essential before you get into anything else. And I got a couple of little bonuses for you in here tonight as well. All right, let's get see who is out there in the building with us. Let's see who's here. Let's see who's in the building with us tonight. Well, awesome. I see some folks have shown up and I'm gonna start with this person here. Frank Jackson, Frank Jackson is here with us and welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for being here serving, being our community manager and one of our moderators. And also we have the emotional CEO, he, who is also one of our team members, and he is one of our moderators, and he always reminds me to say hello to the live tribe. You may be listening and not here um, on in the comments with us tonight, but you're listening because maybe you're cooking dinner or taking care of children or still working, but you're listening and I'm in your ear. I appreciate you giving me the time. You're part of the live tribe and you are very valuable to us and if you're part of the replay crew welcome when we get through this you're going to see some things of value and here's some things of value to you that you can definitely implement right away i am really committed to giving and sharing the knowledge and experience so that it can be used immediately so there we go we do have one other person who i just saw pop in and say hello Welcome to the Live Tribe, Anne Marie. So glad that you're here and you have joined us and you chose and you're at a place where you can put something in chat. So let's get her off the screen. One day I'm going to learn how to use a computer or software, the software we got here. So what are we going to talk about tonight? We're going to talk about two things and Within that, I'm going to cover what I said, but in it, it's making your basic ecosystem work. That's, that's those basic, basic, basic pieces of software specifically. And then I'm going to cover a little bit, some additional tools that will help you level up a little bit more in your processes and in your system. The first thing we're going to talk about, I start here with your calendar. Why? Why do you start with your calendar, Florence? Well, I start with the calendar because this is the place where we really get to see what we have going on. It's our hard landscape. 
It's those appointments, meetings, commitments that have fixed dates and fixed times to them. We know what they are. We've made commitments to them. And that is where you start because it's like, you know, making your bed in the morning, make your bed and everything else goes pretty well. Well, make your calendar work for you and the other items will fit into it quite well. If you don't have a calendar, and we talked about that in one of the earlier episodes, but if you don't have a working calendar, then the other things just kind of flounder around in your world. So your the first item is your calendar. The second item is, oops, went the wrong way. The second item is Well, let's try this again. Is your action tracker. I set this up and then I did something. Your action tracker. So once you've got your calendar laid out, you know the things that you've committed to. You've built your time block calendar so you make sure if you're using theme days, meaning you're going to do administrative work on one day, creative work on another day, uh, meetings on another day, You've worked that out. You've got all of the commitments laid out. If you're going to do volunteer work, you know the blocks of time in your week where you're going to do volunteer work. So your calendar is set. Now you can look at your action tracker. That's the second piece. Some people call this a to-do list manager. Some people call it a task manager. There are a number of pieces of software that I talked about. Hopefully you picked one that you like. If you haven't, we'll tell you what to do with that later but you've got your now you manage all of those actions that you have to run and you can manage them within the time that your calendar says you have if you've got 20 minutes then your action tracker can show you where you what 20 minutes of task to do based on where you are what you have available meaning what equipment you have available what people you have available what time you have available Whatever else you need, whatever other resources you need, your action tracker will give you the information to be able to simply execute. What I would say to you, if you are struggling to get your actions laid out, (laughs) to get your actions laid out well, On the Buy Me A Coffee page, moderators will drop a link into the chat. There is an Uh, action verb resource guide there it'll help you name and or properly write your actions on your action tracker or task list or to-do list whatever you want to call it I call it an action tracker so that you can immediately take action and you're not having to take even a millisecond to figure out or remind yourself exactly what that thing was that you were supposed to do with what you're looking at So your actions tracker is your second most valuable tool after your calendar. Your third item, gee whiz, Florence, is your contact system. Now, we didn't do a particular show on this, but I want to bring it in because we communicate with people. And that means we have to, we need that that contact information organized someplace where we know where it is. We can get to email addresses, old fashioned mailing addresses and phone numbers, WhatsApp, all the ways we contact someone, we have it in one place where we can get to it quickly and easily. Ties back into your calendar and your action tracker. I'll use myself so I don't pick on anybody, as an example, when I want to meet with someone, I'm going to just use Denise as an example. Welcome, Denise. Glad to have you in the house. I want to, ha- I'll have an appointment with Denise on my calendar, but within the description of that appointment, I'll have her email address, her phone number directly in the description. Why? When I need to reach out to her, I'm going to be looking at my calendar. If something changes in the middle of the day or before, 
and I need to either send her a message or call her or send her an email, then I don't have to look any place else. I don't have to open it. And I've pulled that information out of my contact system into the calendar. So they work together. They, these tools work together and you want them to be so that you can get information from one to the other very quickly. So that's the third piece. We didn't do a section on it, but if you would like to see a section or a, a live stream on managing contacts and a contact system of some sort, put a comment in the chat or after the show in comments, and I'll be glad to put one together for you. The fourth core, core, core is your email system, your email system. And that's because the majority, the majority, other than text messaging, the majority of the way you communicate with folks these days is flowing through email in some form or fashion. If you're using calendar scheduling, those scheduling tools send emails to you and the person that you're meeting with. If you need to get information to a colleague, a person, a family member, even these days, uh, a friend, a lot of times, the majority of the time, you're sending that information in an email. If you sign up for a newsletter, it's an email. If you buy something on Amazon, you're going to get an email. So have a reliable email system that you plan out what you're using where. Here's what I do. I have a main email account that I use for business, and I have a main email account that I use for personal. I have a whole bunch of others that I use, but those are my two cores. Business goes to business, personal goes to personal. I know that and I rarely change from that. I've got a separate email account that I use for newsletters. That's because I want to be able to keep it all together and move it. And I don't want it mixed in. I know that it's, e uh, it's newsletters and those types of things. And I got one place where I can go get it, get that information when I want to go back to it. And then I've got, volunteer work and other things that I use their email systems for. And of course, you all know I have a day job and I have an email account for that. But set up your email system so that you know what information is going to go to which email account, when you're going to use it, and how you're going to use it. If you are a business owner or you are a content creator, you do YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of those social platforms, I would encourage you to have a place that you send all of that content, all of the communications from those tools go into one place, one email system. And I actually have it separate from either my private or my main uh, business account. I separate it off completely. So when I go to see that information, I know exactly what I'm looking for, where it came from, and I can track it. Hopefully, if you're getting value from this, go ahead and smash the like button. Let me know, put a comment in, put hashtag value in the comment and let me know that you're getting value from what we've said so far and what we've shared with you. And I want to come back and get in conversation with some of the folks out there in the building. I want to start with this young lady. She makes me happy every time I see her smiling face. I pray you're feeling well. Miss Denise Jordan with this and that with Denise Jordan. She says, I need an action tracker. I get so distracted. It is easy for all of us to get distracted, Denise, very much so. And then, of course, there's Tech Troublemaker in here, and he always says he gets distracted. So I'm not even going to go down that road with him. <laughs> Welcome to the show, both of you. Glad to have you all in the building with us this evening. We're going to go ahead and move on to what I want to say is the next 
part of leveling up your, your ecosystem, and that is to pick a system, pick an ecosystem. And by that I mean, if you're gonna work in the, with Google, build as much as you can, build all of those tools in using the Google tools. Why you don't get distracted, number one, and you do not float between different systems. So your brain is not having to make a lot of changes to move you from one system to the other system. So if it's Google, focus there. If it's Apple, focus there. If it's uh, Microsoft, focus there. If it's something else, whatever your core is, Build your calendar into the degree that you can, your action tracker, your contact database, your email system in one environment. Don't have it spread out. Okay, oh, I, I use Google just for email and I use um, Outlook Teams for my calendar. It, 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 it won't work because you're cutting off the integration or the way the tools can work together. So those cores your calendar, your contact database, your, I didn't even talk about these, your note system, your action tracker, those tools, put them into one ecosystem. My ecosystem is Google. So that's where I keep a bulk of this other than Evernote. My calendar is in Google. My contact database is in Google. My action tracker is not in Google but that's because I've been using something for probably 15 years and I tested using Google. It works really, really well. And I may switch over to that because it does work well. And I love the fact that I can just connect an email directly to a task in Google. That's one of my favorite parts of that, of having that ecosystem. So pick your ecosystem, whatever it is, your main system and commit to it. The second one is once you've done that, a big way to level up. If you do anything where you're scheduling meetings, appointments with other people or other people are reaching out to you, automate that. Don't do it manually. Don't do the email game back and forth. Don't do the text messaging game back and, back and forth. Automate it. There are a number of tools that you can use if you have the Google workspace, they actually have it built in that you can set up a calendar and give a link out and people can book time based on what you've set up. You can use something like Calendly, which I think we talked about, Acuity, TidyCal, there are a number of them. If you need an example of one to use, I'll be glad to share that with you. The third piece that you want to bring in to level up is, and we did do a show on this, is text expansion. And the reason this is the leveling up, you are got your basic system in place, but for everything you do, whether it's writing tasks, sending information, responding to emails, updating uh, appointment scheduling information, almost anything, Anything that involves text, words, text expansion is one of your best friends. If there's anything that you type over and over and over and over again, use text expansion. Do not. <laughs> if you find yourself typing something the same like two or three times, throw it into text expansion. There's a resource on the Buy Me A Coffee page that's a guide to help you figure out what would work for you what you want to try. There are free tools and there are paid tools. It's up to you which ones you use, but I would encourage you, add text expansion in. Get some, this is another way of automating. Get some text expansion in your life to reduce the amount of typing, retyping, and always typing the same thing over and over. Reduce that time and that friction in your environment. The last one is, I call them use case tools. So I'm gonna talk about a couple that I know some folks in the building with us, would it would make sense. 
use case tools. These are the additional things that are very specific to you in your work environment or your personal environment or your personal life. Example, if you are content creator, let's say you're tech troublemaker or Denise, you're content creators, you create a lot of graphics. You have, you create a lot of graphics. So you're going to add as a core part of your tool, whatever. And also, um, this emotional CEO is a, is a designer. He's a, a marketing branding marketing expert. He's also a fabulous designer. So you use graphic design software all the time for you and the work that you do is central to your operation. It is central to your operation. So add that in and then make get know how you're going to use it, know when you're going to use it, and make that a part uh, of your environment. If you are a person who likes who another one could be a database to tr to track your SOPs, your note taking tool. I use Evernote. It's my information hub. You can use a number that we talked about over the last few weeks. So whatever your note-taking tool is, that's a use case and it can be very specific. And let me um, give you an example. When I'm writing certain types of information, for some reason, my brain will only click with it if I use a writing app called Ulysses. It's, it's a no frills writing app. It, it doesn't have any fancy stuff with it. But my brain clicks with the information when I write in that. Once I've written it, I move it into Evernote. But the just the act of writing this certain type of information, for some reason I can't do it any place other than Ulysses. I tried. It, it doesn't work. In my case, another specific use case tool is I use the Apple devices. I use iPhone, iPad, Mac, computer. And I use an application called Drafts. There's a free version and there's a paid version. I put it on all my devices. It works on all of them. And the reason I use it, it's a quick capture, quick text capture tool. I can speak, it does speech to text very, very well, much better than our friend that starts with an S. I won't say her name because all kind of devices are going to go off. And it moves that content can be moved into just about every it I can move an appointment directly into my calendar I can move uh, email directly into email and send it I can move a, a action list right into my action tracker without retyping it so I use that as my quick capture tool so use case tools are those things that are very specific to the way you work over and above the course if you have a question what I would encourage you to do is to put a Q colon in front of your question, and I want to get questions in there. So here's a question here. Google has a free automation for tracking and connecting with people. It is the Google scheduling tool or Google scheduling app. It's in the Google paid service. So if you have Google Workspace, the paid version, like the $5 a month type of version I think it'll work in there um, so you can use it if you don't um, Denise there's one that I use and it I integrate it with Google um, it's called TidyCal it's on um, AppSumo it's you pay for it one time and you've got it for a lifetime which I love I don't really particularly like a whole lot of subscriptions so it's I, I, it was less than 50 bucks and I've paid for it one time and I've got it and I can make all kind of booking appointments on it it's called TidyCal um, if you want more information about it, let me know. I can get it to you. Um, it it's not TidyCal may not be as fancy as I call it fancy. It doesn't have some of the features of a Calendly, but it works wonderfully. It works smoothly, and it integrates with my Google environment. And I it doesn't matter whether I'm using a free Google account or a paid Google account. It works just just fine. So those that's one way. And I know with Apron Diva. That could be something that would be very valuable for you if you're not currently using a tool like that. So if you have any other questions, go ahead and drop them into chat and we will get them answered. Now, this week, like in the last 
one to two days. I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to try to hold my phone up. I'm going to hold my phone up. And Elgato, E-L-G-A-T-O, released version two of the Elgato Stream Deck. Some of you may have heard. This is one of those use cases, but I would say it's all case uses. Um, they released the Stream Deck, Stream Deck Mobile version two application. The Stream Deck is a tool, a, a piece of software, in this case, software on your mobile device that you put, it actually goes on your mobile device and your computer to control your computer. I have it on my phone, like I showed you. I'm probably not doing this the most sophisticated way, but and the beauty of what they did prior to this release of version two, the, the uh, sidebar, the scheduling tool is TidyCal, T-I-D-Y-C-A-L. And it's on AppSumo. And it's a one-time purchase. And you're done with it. You don't have to keep going back. It's a lifetime, one-time purchase. So the Stream Deck, Prior to the release of version two, the mobile app was a yearly subscription. It wasn't super expensive. It was like $24 a year. However, they now have released a free version for your phone. So if you have an iPhone, and I believe there's an Android version, but I don't pay attention to Android because I don't use an Android. If you have an iPad, a computer doesn't have to be a Mac. It can be Windows. It can be our Mac. An iPhone, go to the App Store and download Stream Deck version 2. And if you want help setting it up, getting used to it, reach out to me and let me know. It is one of the best productivity boosters I have added to my system, to my whole ecosystem. You can autom if you can do it on a computer, you can figure out a way to do it with the Stream Deck and make it one button. One button. I'll give you some examples of the way I do this. I have a particular, in Amory, this is really, you will know this when I say it. I have a system that I need to log into pretty regularly to get leadership information, to check on uh, memberships and to assign people. I have programmed one button on my stream deck. I push that button, it goes to the website, it logs me in, and it puts me on the page that I wanna be on. I don't have to use a mouse or a keyboard to get there. Think about that. When I use Evernote, I use, let's see if I can go back. I have, this little green thing right here. I push this and I've got a lot of shortcuts that I use in Evernote. I just push a button on my phone or on, I have a physical stream deck, but this will work on your phone. So it moves me around in Evernote without me having to touch the keyboard a whole lot or the mouse. Big productivity booster. I run the production for my church on, on here, I haven't set that up on the phone yet. But I have buttons for the production for my church service on here. So I just boop, 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 go right through it. Um, so anything that you use regularly like that, opening up all those different email accounts, I use the Stream Deck. And now you can use it on your phone for free to start. They did, they still have the subscription version, but they also added one other thing. They added a one-time buy it, lifetime version. It's like $49. Lifetime, don't buy it again. All their upgrades, whatever they do, you've got it. So that is three ways. You can start with the absolutely free version on your phone. So you don't have to go buy the physical device. 
there's a little physical device that you can buy. You can start with your phone, or you can do the subscription if you like subscriptions, which I don't. Or, <laughs> or you can get the one-time lifetime purchase of the software and be done with it. It Text expansion, the three tools now that I'm so committed, there's one more, but it's a little more complicated. Text expansion, I happen to use a product called Text Expander because it works on all my devices and all of my snippets sync. My Stream Deck, and now I'm really happy because they've expanded what I can do with it and put it on my iPad and I don't have a little screen. And drafts, 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 drafts too, for that quick capture that I need to get information out and I don't have time to be fiddling around, tapping on buttons and, and all of that. I just want to get it in drafts. Those are my three top three that I use. So if this has helped you put hashtag yes in chat and we will get out of here. So Denise says, thank you. She just downloaded the Elgato to practice with it. Please feel free to give me a call if you uh, wanna wanna kind of tinker around with it, or you can call uh, Roy, uh, Tech Troublemaker, because he just did a show with someone on this tool, and I know he uses it as well. Uh, <laughs> Frank, you said it sounds like the Jetsons. Okay, I I'll take that. It sounds like the Jetsons. If you have not uh, done so, please go ahead and hit the like button. And before we get into your action steps, I'm going to remind you to start thinking now of your productivity win of the week. What did you do this week? And I took a page from uh, Walter Strong, from the Huddle with Walter Strong, and I introduced this to my team this week at the office, and they just got a hoot uh, out of sharing what their win of the week was in our uh, Friday meeting. So... What are your action steps? Your action steps this week is number one, document the tools you use. Just open up a Google Doc or open up a whatever you use. I'm gonna say a Google Doc or Evernote page and document all of the tools you use. What do you use for your calendar? What do you use for your contact database? What do you use for your note taking system? What do you use for your project management? What do you use for your uh, auto scheduling? What text expansion tool you, do you use? What quick capture tool do you use? Write them all in a list so you can actually see what you use. And if any part of your system is not working together, any of those software products don't work together, it's hard to get information from one to the other, that's a place of friction. And you may be spending a little bit too much time moving information from software A to software B. That's a place where you'll see it because you'll see, oh, I use Google for everything except my contacts. So when I need to send something to a contact, I've got to go to someplace else and get it and put it into, into Google before I can just send it. Okay, so document your tools. If you haven't taken the time to do that, Document your tools. Your second thing, once you've documented your tools, then <laughs> document, you can just use a highlighter. This is a simple one. You can use a, you can highlight what do you have that you want or need help using? What do you have that you don't know how to use it really well and you're not getting the most out of it? And you either want help using it or you need help using it. Those are not the same thing. Sometimes you need the help because you don't really know how to use it, but you don't want the help. Sometimes you want the help and that's fine. So I say want and or need help using something on that list. Okay. So highlight it, circle it, put a star by it, however you document that on that list. The last thing is ask a trusted advisor for the help that you need. A friend, a brother, a, cons a, 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 a coach, 
whomever. Frankly, a trusted advisor could be some of the fabulous YouTube videos that we have. Like I said, uh, Tech Troublemaker just had a show about using the Stream Deck. That could be your trusted advisor. Go look at some of his material and learn from what's already available to you. This community and I'm the, the Equipping You community, the Equipping You Huddle, we have great resources. We've got people who will help you, people who've already put content out, training out that you can take advantage of. Those are trusted advisors. They've been through the fire. They know how to use what they tell you that they're using. Call on them to get some help or at least watch their material to get some help. So who's got a win of the week? Because I'm coming for you now. I want to I wanna see those wins. I want to see your wins of the week. So my win of the week uh, this week is version two of the Stream Deck on my phone and uh, this weekend I am going to be setting it up on my iPad because of course it's a bigger interface and you can get listen when that man said you could get 168 buttons on an iPad I can have 168 different things running and see them all on a screen in front of me I don't have to be clicking around just tap a button. I am so happy about that. I hope you will be too when you try it. So your win of the week, I want to hear. And I want to welcome this young lady. We haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. I pray all is well with you. Lisa Maria, welcome to the stream. So glad that you're here with us. Anybody else have a win of the week that you'd like to share? I'm not going to force you, but I would love to hear about it. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit the like button, hit the notification bell so that you know when new content is being posted. And also for those who are a member of the community who let me know, the uh, Equipping You newsletter came out today. So if you didn't get it, let me know if you would like to get it. I've shared how to share how to get it, but you can download any of the resources that are on the Buy Me A Coffee page and that will trigger me to add you to the newsletter. So when it comes out, you can um, make sure you receive the information. And this is not, uh, the newsletter is really for the community. It is really for those people who want to get better in this area of productivity. And this time we, we um, highlighted, we started doing community spotlight. So we spotlighted the community member who won last week, won the, to be, to be in the newsletter. And so Denise is sharing a win of the week. You always have something great, young lady. She says, editing video each day, planning ahead so you're not in crisis mode. Fabulous. Um, yeah, you do some really awesome videos. Really, really awesome, awesome videos. I like the way you, and they're straightforward, no fuss, no muss. I love them. So keep them coming because I, I like watching your video and your material and learning from you. And Lisa Maria, I hope to see your material starting to come back out very soon as well. And Roy, of course, you keep pushing out content, sir. And you had a great show on Tuesday, so I'm surprised you didn't say anything about that as your win of the week. But it's okay. It is okay. Well, that's really it, y'all. We're going to say... Well think we're going to say good night right over here right over here it's going to be a link to the playlist for June to so that you get this series or as I call it mini course available to you y'all have a great weekend good night